Today was a very rough day on the waters. I um, I got up, went to the library, and I went fishing for some agents. Um, for those that have been following along with my goals for the month, I, I'm trying to find at least three agents for each story to send off for the month of December. Um, but today, man, it was a, it was a bad day in the water. <laughs> it was a bad day to go fishing because uh, there weren't many agents, um, that I found. Um, I think, I think part of it is just the time of the year a lot. Um, so, some of the ones that were more promising that had, um, you know, sort of requests that they were looking for stories that were similar to mine. They were simply closed for submission. Um, they were simply closed uh, at this time, and I- I'm guessing because it's the end of the year, I'm assuming agents probably don't, you know, probably shut down. Um, I had a buddy of mine back in college who, who I think, I don't know, I don't know if this was conspiracy or what, but they, they often said that agents would shut down this time of year because of NaNoWriMo. Uh, because so many people basically would first draft their novels in November, um, that they would immediately start going through and querying them in December without without doing any kind of like additional drafts and all that stuff. And so agents, as a policy, would just shut down basically for a couple months um, to avoid the the sort of NaNoWriMo crowd and having to sift through um, these these sort of terrible first and, and maybe just barely second drafts uh, of stories. Um, I don't know how true that is. I don't know. I don't know. Again, to, to what degree that is true. Um, it, it always sounded kind of conspiracy ish, uh, when, whenever we said it, but probably some truth to that. Um, but the long and short of it is I only found two agents today. Um, only found two agents that were take, that were open to submissions that were looking for stories that were similar to, um, to what I had wrote. Um, both agents were um, similar to the um, the the female um, you know tarot reader story there. Uh, I, I didn't find anything for the wrestling novel. Unfortunately, that one is it's just very niche. Um, that one it's it's just part of it is because it has male protagonists, not female ones, so that that tends to have less agents interested in it and when you go to agent websites and all that stuff there that you know women's women's reads and characters women tend to be ones that they they'll put down they're looking for on that like on their you know their list of interests um so that right there just uh, you know makes that one a bit more appealing um the other thing too is with the wrestling novel obviously the, the niche of, of kind of pro wrestling and also um, stories of like a rivalry um you know rivalry and stories of uh, of like kind of fierce competition it's just not as as broad of an interest um, as as like a thriller about you know a, a young girl with, that's on the run basically with her mother, um, you know, and they live like this scam artist, right? That one just has more appeal. It's more of a thriller, um, just the nature of what I wrote, really. Um, so with that, uh, the story basically, I was able to find two agents for that for that particular story, and that was it. Uh, and I was. <laughs> I did through about I, I won't say it was fifty agents, but I went through a, a fair number today. Um, I didn't I didn't want to keep going further just because, with all of them being closed right now, I don't want to have to go back through and make a second pass on a lot of these agents. I'm gonna have to unfortunately because they're ones that that were that looked good, looked promising um, potentially, but just were happened to be closed. So rather than continue to go through and having to re-go through a second time and try to figure out if I queried this person before or not and all that I figured all right just just take kind of take the beating of, of hey listen you, you found two agents today query them um, and then we'll see what happens in January um, but it, it is apparent though that I'm gonna have to wait till at least January to start looking for agents again um, just again kind of the nature of, of what it is um, certainly not going to be heartbroken over that um, by any means, but you know, the day, the day does feel like a wash. It does feel like a bit of a, you know, kind of a wasted day in a sense. Oh, man. If, if it's anything, it, it re it reinforces the idea. This is going to be a long process still. It's still going to take time. It's still going to take months and potentially years to get to maybe even find somebody for these projects. Um, if at all, if at all. Um, it's always frustrating, always frustrating to go back to this. I, I say it every time. <laughs> it's always, always, always frustrating to, you know, to, to kind of go through this process. Um, 
everybody believes their stories are good. Everyone believes that their stories uh, are marketable. Um, we all do, and this this whole process always becomes unnerving when you're looking for agents because it's um, you're always like, wow, this the story. The story when you write it, you're always like, wow, this thing has this thing must have an audience, right? It's so good, I, I, it has to have an audience. I can't imagine it not having an audience. I can't imagine that there wouldn't be an audience for this story. And yet, maybe there is, um, and maybe there's not. Uh, it's it's. I think it would be difficult to not have people interested in what I wrote. I, 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 it's even even at my most cynical about these stories, I still think there's at least there at least is an audience for it, um, despite how many how many small it is. And yet, even when I say how small it is, I'm like, man, I've seen works like this. That and that, that's that's probably the most frustrating part. You know, you you've seen works. I, I think this is true of everybody, probably you've probably seen works that are similar to your story before, right? You've seen the genre, you've seen the tropes before, you've seen all of this done at least to some degree before, hopefully not too closely. Otherwise, you know, you're just copying, you know, you know, otherwise you're doing an imitation and no one's going to be interested in an imitation. But um, presumably you've seen other works that are similar to your title um, and you've seen success, right? You've seen that these stories definitely have some degree of success. Um, so it's, 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 it can be infuriating to to see that and go, well, all right, so I wrote basically the same thing here. I wrote things that are similar. Why am I not having success, right? Like, why why is mine not catching interest and all that stuff? And, man, I I don't know. And that, that, that and that's, if I knew, I, I probably would be less frustrated with myself if I knew. Um, you know, it, a lot of it is just finding the right person at the right time. It's, a lot of it is just timing. Um, you're trying to appease basically when it comes to agents, certainly at this stage, you're trying to appease basically an audience of one who is looking at things with a, through a very cynical lens themselves and in a very discerning lens because they only have so much time to devote to this. Um, as was pointed out in the comment section, um, on one of my earlier videos here, you know, most agents are doing this part time. Most aren't, aren't, aren't doing this thing full time. So they can only take a handful a year right they're going to be making sure that it's it's the handful that you know has some sort of legs um again it sucks it hurts and it, it yeah it, it burns my soul <laughs> it really does it really burns somewhere deep inside of me to to know that but it's it's the reality so with that i'm going to be going back to to this obviously next month i'll, I'll continue just to work on my short story for the kind of remaining days until i go back to querying again um there's at least a bright spot staying active staying working is always a bright spot in, in this process but yeah i wish there was an alternative route that's that's ultimately what i think would bring some sort of success if i could find some sort of alternative route to this process because i'm someone who's always taken things the basically i've always approached things indirectly I, I i say that all the time people people ask me all the time you, you know like if someone ever asked me like to tell me you know tell me about yourself right or tell me something about you know you sometimes you hear that you'll hear it in an interview sometimes you'll you'll you know if you meet people they see be like oh tell me a little about yourself right one of the things i will say is is kind of like a defining characteristic of myself is i always approach things indirectly i never 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 do anything directly um that's true of when I got, you know, my, my MFA, for example, right? I didn't, my MFA basically was free. Um, for those that don't, I guess I already know this. I got mine for free. The reason why is I, I basically found out that if you were an employee at the university, um, where I got my degree, you got your degree for free. So I quit my, my job and, and got a job doing, um, basically doing, um, basically labor for the university and then I applied to the program and thankfully I got in um, and got it for free right I, I didn't directly go I didn't do the direct path of, of you know just applying or taking out loans or just paying directly I, I went indirectly um, not saying everyone can do that obviously I mean not everybody can can do that but that that's how I approached it right um, many paths in my life I approached indirectly I don't ever do things kind of the the, the trodden way um I, I think the, the, the most the most I think the most successful way of doing things is to approach things the way nobody else is doing it. 
Um, and so if there was an indirect path, there was a different way to get an agent's attention um, rather than just going through queries and all that stuff and through the slush pile, if there was a way to approach it, I don't know how that would be. I don't know, like, <laughs> you know, when you, when you think of alternative way, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it, you know, the, the line between, um, between, you know, trying to gain interest in stalking all of a sudden comes up, right? Like, 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 like what are you going to do? You know, wait outside their house and then catch them, right? What are you going to do? Throw, throw your manuscript like, like, like in their mailbox, right? You know, that, that, that that's weird, right? You're going to, you're never going to get a response back. You know, what are you going to do? Wait. You know, you know, go, go find, find out what bars an agent go, like move to the city where the agent lives, like New York or something like that, basically, and go find their favorite bars, hang out, and then you know have a few drinks, basically, and talk them up, like, and, and all of a sudden casually drop that you're an author too, and explain your project and hope it catches their attention. It's like, it sounds, it sounds maybe cool to a desperate mind, but that's not <laughs> those things. Those things often come across, I imagine, very, very uncomfortably in real life, right? It's, it's not exactly kosher. Um, but I wish there was an indirect path. I wish there was a, a less trodden path, some sort of way I can approach the situation that maybe has not been done before. Um, maybe, maybe an idea will come to me. Maybe, maybe some clever idea will come to me. Um, maybe. I, I've, I've often live my life thinking that, you know, success is kind of just one con away or, or like, you know, like just one, one cool, unique idea will be the thing that, that will get me there. You know, just, just kind of, like I said, you know, um, when it comes to the, you know, the, the indirect path, right. I've always thought that maybe there was one technique I haven't tried before, one idea that I haven't considered, um, one new way of approaching the situation that I haven't done before as often the thing that's going to lead me to success. And, at times it pays off, but a lot of times it's it's like you 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 you're shooting yourself in the foot a lot of the times. Um, and when it comes to something as important as an agent, it's like I I don't know what what the path would be. I don't know what the trick. Um, I don't know what I could pull off that would be um, that could get their attention and actually work. That wouldn't require me to submit through a slush pile. I don't know. Uh. Just, just brainstorming here. I know, I know a lot of agents do like free consult, like or but not, not free, but they'll do consultations. You got to pay some money, and they'll do a consultation or something with you. That's, that feels like a very pay to play kind of game, there with perhaps not a lot of turnover. Um, at, at best, you'll get an agent to tell you why they're rejecting you and probably give you some advice, on it. It can be helpful, yeah. Um, I don't know what they would tell me, to be honest. That that I probably didn't already know about my project. Um, yeah, it's 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 an idea, I suppose, something like that. But I've there's something something inside me that's telling me to approach this indirectly, to find an indirect way of doing this and approach it. Um, I don't know what that'll be. Um, I don't know if I'll ever go down that path. And it, I, for all I know, I'm gonna continue to do this this query thing. But yeah, I, I wish there was an indirect path. I wish there was a different way to approach this that did not involve just the slush pile.